Alright, well hello and welcome. Welcome Antelo, today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day, and I'm going to try to keep this vlog eh, just a little bit shorter, just due to some time constraints on my end. Uh, I'm going to ECC, I still have a whole mess of stuff to do, if you can see back there, maybe, no, I'm trying to, I'm packing up uh, some vape gear, I need to actually pack, pack, I just have stuff to do, I have to mail stuff today, blah, 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 there's a whole lot going on, but let me get out my vlog notes, welcome everybody to the vlog, I do have some stuff that I wanted to talk about today, uh, I do not, unfortunately, have a retro vaping segment prepared, uh, this week is a short week, I only had three days, three days to shoot uh, five videos and then get everything ready for ECC, but I'm gonna be at ECC. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be great. Uh, we're, I'm gonna be giving away uh, a whole mess of juice, a whole mess of Grim Cult stuff, and a whole mess of Epic Cloud stuff. I think Saturday. I'm not sure at the Beyond Vape booth. I'm not really sure. But if you can track me down, uh, we're, I'm gonna be throwing out uh, a bunch of uh, a bunch of juice. I'm really excited to uh, to see so many people again. Then it's gonna be it's gonna be a really good event. It's gonna be really really fun. It's gonna be really really huge. So let me get out my vlog notes. And let me make sure that I have all my links prepared. Um, yes, due to ECC, my schedule due to a lot of stuff, my schedule is gonna be wonky uh, all the way through about the middle of September. This this weekend I have ECC next week and I know that my video schedule listen I know that my video schedule isn't like crucial to the day-to-day -to, -day, to your day-to-day -day life it doesn't affect you directly it's just something that I like to communicate so I want to make sure that we're all on the same page it's just something I want to put out there because I feel like uh, it's 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 a thing and I just want to I want to put it out there so next week <laughs> next week I'm gonna do a traditional double feature uh, on Monday. Monday double feature, I'm gonna do two videos, then Thursday I'm going to have a vlog video of all the footage that I shot at ECC. I've got uh, all my video equipment, which means I have two GoPro cameras, but I'm gonna be shooting a whole bunch of stuff, uh, hopefully some interviews with some people, hopefully just fun, good ECC stuff. So that's gonna be that vlog next week. Then I'm leaving again uh, on some personal matters, and the next following week I'm gonna do another double feature and hopefully a, uh, a regular vlog and then I'm gonna be gone again to Winston-Salem North Carolina for vape mania I don't even know what that looks like vape mania is three days this year which means I'm flying out on a Thursday which means there may not be a vlog the following week I don't know it doesn't really matter just know that I'm trying my absolute best to get all of my weekly review series up on YouTube for your viewing pleasure and always I want to have a vlog up on YouTube. The vlog is kind of become the most uh, crucial thing. I feel like I can maybe, uh, maybe we won't do a wild card Wednesday this week, but I do want, I, but I have to get, I have to get a vlog down. So one thing I wanted to update from last week's vlog is I posed the question or rather a viewer posed the question from a viewer mail, how do you feel about vaping in public? Um, what do you do? How do you act? Are you respectful? Do you just blow clouds everywhere? Do you stealth vape? Do you do this, that, and the other? And a lot of people in the comments, I mean, a lot of people comments commented in the comment section, which, yeah, that's what the comment section is for. But I had a couple, uh, I had a couple interesting, had a couple interesting comments. Let me get to the first one here. Trevor writes and says, I vape respectively, respectfully, respectively? I vape respectfully. Little kids around, I put it away. Crowded place, I put it away. Disneyland, vape where they smoke. It's not a tobacco product, but people look at it that way. And it makes all look bad when some douchebag just doesn't give a fuck about anyone and blows clouds, bro, clouds everywhere. Time and a place for that, uh, time and a place for all that. We have to think of this image as somewhat classy thing. 
and good group of respectful people who are just trying to improve our health. Absolutely, Trevor, I do agree with you. Had another person uh, comment, Jacob writes and says, for the vaping in public thing, when I'm outside, I make sure I'm away from any doors. If I'm near buildings, I'll vape no problem while making sure no one will get a face full of vapor. I don't vape inside unless it's a vape shop because I don't have that, well, I'm not smoking, so I'm just gonna blow a big cloud and look like a douche in this public store type mentality. <laughs> I love vaping and I love meeting other vapors, but if I see you blow a huge cloud in a store, restaurant, or public inside place that isn't a vape shop or something like that, there's a big chance we are not friends. It pisses me off because it ruins our image to the public. We are fighting for our right to vape, but we need to have some common courtesy to the people and families around us that don't vape. It ruins our image and it will backfire at all vapors everywhere and will not help our cause. Absolutely. I agree with you. Uh, also had Jennifer, Miss Jennifer left a comment and says, I don't vape where I shouldn't vape. I'm always super aware of my surroundings when I vape and I try my best to be courteous to others. Like this past weekend at Seafair when I wanted to vape, I went away from the crowds which happened to be where the smokers were. But I am in public, I, uh, but I am in public, I treat it the same way I did when I smoked. That is the reason I don't like Blake Vapes on Instagram. I used to follow him, but he is really a douche when it comes to vaping. He vapes anywhere and everywhere, like the mall, conventions, grocery stores, and so on. Shots fired, Blake Vapes. And you know what? I, I like Blake Vapes, and I get that he's doing it as a joke. It's very tongue-in-cheek, uh, so to speak. But, you know, he does. He, I mean, Jennifer raises a good point. He's being a comedian and he's being funny, but that's the character. I don't think the, the, the person behind Blake Vapes, who does have a real name that's not Blake, I think that person might be actually a respectful vapor, but the character of Blake Vapes, he is the one who vapes in public and blows vapor in people's face and he's like, hell yeah, dude, you just got vaped. Like, that's the character doing that, not necessarily him as a vapor. Does that make sense? But regardless, Jennifer, thank you for chiming in. And then I had the, this person whose name I'll be blocking out who wrote, when I'm in public, I vape how I normally would. Why would I vape any different just because people are too stupid to know what it actually is? No, I will keep chucking clouds and they can do a bit of research and realize it's not dope or a cigarette spelled incorrectly or what they think it is uh, for fuck's sake. I don't know. It seems like uh, the overwhelming majority of people are respectful when they're out and vaping in public. Um, it was interesting after I read that email and after I posed that question, I was very like aware and cognizant of what I was doing when I was out in public. Like if I go on a walk and I walk downtown to get some tacos from the taco truck or I, I go down to the waterfront, I was very aware of, wow, okay, how do I vape in public? What what am I doing right now? And there were people around, so I was like, I'm just not gonna vape right now. And then we're walking and there's no people around, so I said, okay, well, I guess now I'm gonna vape and... And I look and see if it got on anybody. Does anybody say anything? Does anybody go, mm, eh, mm. Because people uh, do that in public. I get that a lot is, it, it, I was walking down, by the waterfront, I don't remember exactly where I was, um, but I was walking and talking and vaping and not really being aware of my surroundings, I guess, and I wasn't blowing, you know, big clouds. I was blowing small-ish sized clouds. And you know, when you're walking and you're vaping, when you see someone else do it, when they exhale vapor, it goes vroomp and goes around them and then leaves like this big trail of vapor around them. And this girl, who must have been 80 pounds and nothing, just a stick figure, came running by me in her jogging outfit with her earbuds in. And she's like, <coughs> <coughs> and I'm like, what? Why? What? Did you really cough? Or did you see something that looked like smoke, so you just assumed and then you coughed because you're a dick? Did it smell like a bakery? Did it smell like strawberry milk? Chances are that's what happened. But yes, it's funny. I was really aware of how I vape in uh, how I vape in public, and I stick to the I stick to what the majority of people seem to stick to is I don't vape where I can't 
smoke. I just don't do it. And I, you know, I'm down to three milligram Nick now. Sometimes zero, usually three, the occasional six, but it's generally three. And when you get your nicotine levels so low, you can go a really long time without vaping. You don't have to vape. Uh, when I flew cross country recently, I was in airport, airplane, airport, airplane for probably, I don't know, 12, maybe 13 hours of travel didn't vape, didn't vape the whole time, didn't even really think about it, didn't get antsy, didn't get like, oh God, I need to vape, I need to have a cigarette, I need that nicotine in my body. Ugh. I just went that long without vaping and I didn't even really care, like I didn't even really think about it. And then when I got off the plane and you get outside and you see all the smokers just going crazy because they've been traveling for 12 hours, then you go, yeah, okay, I'm gonna have a vape now. So you pull out your vape and you vape. And it's, it's just interesting, you don't have to vape all the time you can set it down you can take a break you don't have to constantly constantly be vaping but thank you everybody for the uh, for the comments it was very interesting one thing i wanted to do is vaporlights.com sent me a really great infographic so i'm going to link to this in the description and I, it's vaporlights.com and i now look i don't know this company from any other company uh apparently they're a vape company and i'm not endorsing what they sell or anything like that but they did create a cool infographic uh it's kind of more based out of the uk because it, they use the euro symbol 2000 euros a year by switching from smoking to vaping but they have this great infographic called the true cost of smoking and it talks about the environment and how 4.5 billion cigarette butts are being littered this year and 850,000 cigarette butts end up in our lakes and rivers to put that in perspective is the combined weight equal to 5,000 blue whales and it's roughly 50% of the Earth's remaining blue whale population. They go on to talk about how it affects animals. They go on to talk about cost. It says uh, women, uh, so there's a little section that says to the moon and back. It says when women smoke, uh, women smoke 3,418 kilometers of cigarettes a day. Men smoke 5,232 kilometers of cigarettes a day. It's 384,000 kilometers to the moon. Three months of the total cigarettes smoked each day in the UK stacked one by one on top of each other would we reach the moon and back. That is a lot of cigarettes. Goes on to talk about health. There's a little thing of cost at the end. I, I think this is really, really cool. I think this is something that you can uh, share around, save, embed, put it on your website, put it on, put it on your Twitter, put it on whatever you want. Um, and so that's uh, that's that's very very cool. And I forget the gentleman's name who sent me that, but thank you for sending that my way. Vaporlights.com. They have the true cost of smoking infographic. Additionally, I did want to touch on some advocacy. Of course, there's always advocacy going on. California, you know, Alabama, Arkansas, Florida. Christian sent me an article about Norway, and now I love Norway, and I would like to go to Norway someday. This is on the planetofthevapes.co.uk uh, kind of news feed, blog feed on their website, and so it says they are uh, trying to overturn the ban on e-liquids in Norway. So they've recently published the details on Norwegian's government's clapdown on vape shops. So I, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to read this, uh, this whole thing, but it says, Stumbling through the Google Translate, Minefield reveals that the Norwegian Directory of Health is threatening Norwegian online vape stores with fines. The DOH is demanding online retailers remove any comment or image they perceive as portraying a positive image of vaping. This news will send shivers through the British vaping community as the UK faces a catch-all tobacco products directive ban on promoting and advertising of e-cigarettes by print radio television or public event media their public event media that's i mean that's like ecc that's that's crazy the news is all that more perverse given that none of these retailers sell anything containing nicotine in compliance with the current ban um norway norway is getting uh is getting somewhat uh messed up here uh they're taking an odd stance on e-cigs and basically threatening online retailers, threatening brick and mortar stores uh, with fines if they say anything positive about vaping. I guess maybe all they can say is, 
this is vaping. Ah, that's all we're allowed to say. They can't say, oh, this is vaping. It's it's great. I love it. It got me off cigarettes. I've been smoke-free for X amount of years. So that's crazy. It's interesting to, it's always interesting me, to me to read um, what other countries, uh, you know, are doing with their vaping legislature, with their vaping laws, with their, you know, directory of health committees, this, that, and the other. Last thing, last thing that I want to talk about uh, this week before we get into anything else is a fellow named Darth Drips sent this to me. And I just thought this was so effing, effing ridiculous, effing ridiculous. I, I'm going to need a vape before I even talk about this because it is so ridiculous. You can't even think of about the most ridiculous thing that you can. And this is more ridiculous than that. Uh, this is uh, I'm going to link to this in the description, vaperanks.com. I've never been to this website before, but they have this article, so I'll be linking to them. Big headline on the page, musician attributes hearing loss to electronic cigarettes. What? Literally, what? Australian musician Rob Swire recently toot to Twitter. I think it meant to say took to Twitter. <laughs> but it says toot to Twitter. Anyway, recently took to Twitter to bash electronic cigarettes, more specifically the propylene glycol and e-liquid for causing him to temporarily lose his hearing in his left ear. This is what he said on Twitter. I have randomly become completely deaf in the left ear. Super lame. I'm going to go see a doctor. 371 uh, favorites, 160 reposts. I don't know who Rob Swire is. Then he posts on Twitter later, hearing restored, finally, PSA, if you enjoy being able to hear, e-cigs and vaping is a really fucking bad idea. What? Goes on on Twitter to say, propylene glycol, the ingredient in most e-cigs or e-juice, is autotoxic, i.e. toxic to the cochlea and auditory Nerve. There's no research on what happens to propylene glycol when heated and inhaled as vapor because the research hasn't been done. False, Mr. Rob Swire. The research has been done and it doesn't cause hearing loss. But take it from someone who has just lost all hearing in his left ear for the past four days. Fuck propylene glycol and everyone that sells it. Yeah, fuck propylene glycol. Fuck propylene glycol? Fuck propylene glycol. That is a re that is a stupid, stupid statement to say. Do you want to know how many things you use on a daily basis that have propylene glycol in them? Things you eat have propylene glycol in them. Salad dressings have propylene glycol in them. Fake butter, like I can't believe it's not butter. Yeah, that has propylene glycol in it, as well as toothpaste, shampoo, conditioner. Propylene glycol is a widely used product. It's a widely, widely used ingredient. It's in frosting. It's in some coffees. It's in a lot of stuff. So for this musician who, don't get me, don't get me started on musicians and their political stances on things. I don't care. I don't care what you have to say, Bono, from you 2 I pay you to sing. That's what I want you to do. I want you to sing. That's all I care about. I don't care what you think about Rand Paul. I don't care what you think about Hillary Clinton. That matters to me zero. He goes on Twitter to say, uh, I'm not saying anyone needs to panic. I just, if you want your ears to work, tread carefully. I wouldn't wish that shit on anyone. Then someone else, some other musician, Benjamin Weirig, no idea who that is. I can back you up on this, actually. I was deaf in one ear just a few weeks, and it came back, uh, just a few weeks, and my hearing came back after I quit vaping. That's fantastic. And then he goes on Twitter again and says, how's this? If any decent university audiology department is interested in studying the links between e-cigs, vaping, and propylene glycol, including hearing loss, I would be willing to fund the research. He's going to fund, he's going to fund research. Great. Rob, put your fucking money where your mouth is and fund the research. I'm sure we could find a university audiology department to, uh, to do this. Put your money where your mouth is. There's not a chance that propylene glycol 
caused you to lose temporarily lose your hearing in one ear that is ridiculous my hearing has got better every hearing test i take i do amazing on it's like that seinfeld bit where he says you seem to have some sort of super hearing what you actually heard was a cotton ball touching felt i have that level of hearing my hearing has only got better over the last six years mostly because i wear earplugs at rock concerts so there you go rob swire is an idiot and he thinks propylene glycol made him deaf uh so that there you go now that we're uh, over 20 minutes into this vlog we talked about what we're doing in next week's schedule. We did the follow-ups. Uh, we talked about Rob Sire and his idiotic brain. We talked about vaping in Norway. Now, now what I want to do is go over to the beer section. All right, it's time for beer. Welcome to the beer section. It's nice and cool in here. It's actually not. Uh, it's actually not very cool. What I have tonight? Oh, I'm excited about this beer. The great thing is, I literally know nothing about this beer. Sanctus Dominicus dot com. Sanctus Dominicus, which sounds like a ghost song. In fact, I, I think Ghost in one of their songs actually sings the word Sanctus Dominicus. Um, but that makes uh, that makes no sense. That's not what it's about. It's about this beer. This beer came to me from Belgium, from Mr. Thomas. Yes, I'm getting his name correctly this time. Thomas. Here, can I translate this page to English? This page has been translated. No, it has not. It is still, no, it has not. It is still in Belgium. Uh, let's try org, because I think org was a different website. I can find literally nothing about this beer. I know that this brewery brews two beers. They brew a blonde and a brown, and this is a brown. Yes, okay, okay. I know they have two, they have two beers. They have a blonde, uh, and they have a brown, and this I believe is the brown because the brown because it's well, it's brown. The label looks brown. Does that label not look brown? The label looks brown to me. So this says uh, the brown is a dense, is dense and racy character with roasted malt flavors, softened by a touch of fruity banana. What? It has a sweet bitterness and is very pleasant in the mouth, particularly balanced. Similar to a Trappist beer, uh, it is very easy to drink and can be used with a hard cheese to taste sturdy. I wish I wish I had some hard cheese right now to taste so it could taste sturdy. Thankfully, it's just a cap. No corks this week, although we might have a cork next week. And uh, I'm just going to be pouring this, as I often do, into a glass uh, right over my keyboard. I can already see this is going to have a head that I need to drink through like a man because it was coming out of the uh, it was coming out of the out of the beer out of the beer bottle there. Yes, Ruby, look at that. I don't know why I always point this out to you. It's because you said you told me to my face to drink through the head like a man. And that is one of the things that has just stuck with me my whole life. Drink through the head like a man. And so every time I, I drink beer, I just whip myself and I'm crying. And I'm like, drink through the head like a man. <laughs> Be a man. Drink through the head like a man. But this is the Sanctus Dominicus. I would actually be interested to, to try the blonde one. It says it's a uh, itself is subtle and complex beer with a fruity aroma with notes of white pepper, cinnamon, cardamom, and nutmeg. Uh, it is light and clear with golden highlights. This one, let's go back to this one, fruity banana. It has a sweet bitterness and is very pleasant in the mouth. It is particularly balanced, similar to a Trappist beer. It's easy to drink and can be used with a hard cheese. I like Google Translate because I'm sh I'm pretty sure that they didn't say can be used with a hard cheese. Like, how would you use this with a hard cheese? Like, you do you use the hard cheese to open the bottle? That's that's something that's lost in translation. I think they mean consume it with a dart with a hard cheese. But I don't have a hard cheese, so all I'm going to do right now is taste this Sanctus Dominicus. That's for you. Uh, thank you so much, Thomas, and uh, the the community, the people of Belgium. My taste buds. Thank you. 
Man, the Belgians really know what they're doing. This, I know I've said this before, this, I'm already going to burp. Robin, Sheik, what's in the news? I'm already going to burp. This is a very, very effervescent beer. It's very, very carbonated. The head kind of disappeared. It's kind of this dark color. I do get like this very malty flavor. I don't get any sort of even a whisper of any sort of banana flavor or texture like that. Hmm. It's good. It's interesting. It's not as sweet as I was expecting. Oh, there is a little bit of banana in there. I do. I tasted banana. It's on it's on the aftertaste. And the only way that I tasted it was I took a drink like this, like I'm about to. Mm-hmm. And then I breathed out through my mouth. And there was like this, not like a banana, not like a banana, like a, like a, like a, taffy banana or like a candy banana it's like a banana peel it's like if you took a banana peel and just bit into it with the heart with the outside and just bit into it that's exactly the that's exactly the flavor that i get if i exhale i literally have no juice right now that would pair well with this maybe sherbet in the dark you think sherbet you think a rainbow sherbet flavor would pair well with a uh, with a brown trappist style beer that you use with hard cheese it's not horrible it's just not it's just not perfect i'm trying to think in my head of what what oh this might of what juice might pair with it this might pair with it this malicious liquids might pair with it malicious maiden Malicious Liquids is uh, a new line from Local, and this one, I believe, if I'm tasting it correctly, would pair well with this beer. Yes, that does. That actually goes really well together. Uh, this Maiden has like a creamy bakery type flavor to it, which seems, which to me pairs well with these darker Belgian style beers. I definitely get that hoppiness and I actually do get some of that like banana peel mm, on the interesting. Anyway, I would like uh, I would like to use this with hard cheese in the future. So once again, Thomas, thank you so, so much for the beers. I am overjoyed. I've really, really enjoyed them. I have one left that I'll probably do not in the next vlog because the next vlog is the ECC vlog, but in the vlog after that, definitely. Definitely, I will taste it. Well, that's what I got. That's what I got for beer. I'm going to top this off. I'm going to try and go rustle up some dinner. And I'm going to sit and relax and uh, watch Dexter and drink my beer and vape my malicious liquids with it. So, thanks. I, I'm assuming we'll do shout-outs next. It is shout-out time. So yeah, I do have uh, I do have some shout outs that I wanted to do this week, and I'm going to keep these short. First shout out of the week goes to CJ and Andrew. So they run shop in uh, it's in New York State. I can't remember the state. Uh, I can't remember the city that it's in, but I know it's in New York State. But they they have created a new YouTube that is actually pretty cool. They've been on a very huge advocacy kick, which is fantastic. But they started this new YouTube called Together Win or Lose, and I'll post a link to it in the description. But it's basically CJ and Andrew speaking about advocacy and speaking about the vape community. And they say a lot of stuff that you kind of cringe because you go, oh, yeah, that is true. We, we, do, we do do that. It's more of like a motivational thing. It's more of like a, uh, a rally the troops kind of get motivated. Andrew is a, is a really good public speaker. He's very, very articulate. He's a very, very smart guy. So I enjoy listening to him talk. I've, I've watched all the videos. They are great. Uh, so I want to I want to give a shout out to them. I want to link to their YouTube in the description. It's very, very good stuff. I would really encourage you to subscribe and watch their, watch their videos. Second shout out goes to Metal Gear Vapor. So uh, Metal Gear Vapor is a YouTube guy. He's a YouTube uh, vape reviewer. I'll post a link in the description to his giveaway video. He's doing a giveaway because uh, he got to a thousand subscribers. He's up to 1155 now. 
and when he got to a thousand subscribers he said he was going to do a giveaway uh and he's got a whole mess of stuff to give away and it, the fur he's giving away an Inokin disruptor uh, an Aeromizer version 2, an Aeromizer RTA, th four 30 mil bottles from A10 Vapes. Uh, I donated the Grim Cult line for his giveaway, so someone's winning three 30 mil bottles of the Grim Cult line, uh, an, I an MVB 20 watt, three click kits, four iClear 30 tanks. What year is this? iClear 30 tanks. Anyway, he's doing a big giveaway, and uh, he's a cool guy, and he seems like a genuine guy, and he's got good videos, and he's up to a thousand subs now, which is uh, which is which is very very cool. Metal Gear Vapor, he's doing a big giveaway, so shout out to you, Metal Gear Vapor. Congratulations on your recent success, and I do have two other shout outs to do. Like I said, I'm gonna try to keep this vlog. We're gonna do a little bit shorter, but I do have a new segment I'm gonna to try to shoehorn in there as well. As well as I'm talking about keeping the vlog short, I do have a, a new segment that I would like to shoehorn in there. So let me read these. Uh, this one comes from Emmanuel. Uh, he says, hi Nick, I was wondering if you could do a shout out for my wife, Mindy. She was a pack a day smoker for 17 years. I had my first puff when I was six. I had my first puff when I was six, then was a regular smoker starting at 14. You had your first puff of a cigarette when you were six years old? Wow, that's, wow, that's crazy, uh, wow. Then when I was a regular smoker at 14, I quit on February 14th as a Valentine's Day gift to my wife. I haven't had a cigarette since I got my first Ego Starter Kit. I couldn't have done it without my awesome supportive wife. She has always been supportive of my vaping from the start, even after it turned into a hobby and not just a way to quit smoking. Uh, she even watches review videos with me. I understand that you get a ton of requests. I would just appreciate it someday if you found the time to do this. Thank you so much for all your great vids and everything you do for the vaping community. I have attached a pic of two of the two of us. Thanks. Absolutely. Absolutely. Emmanuel, Mindy, consider yourselves shouted out. These are the things that I love hearing. I love hearing about supportive, significant others, wives, girlfriends, life partners, whatever. I don't care. Be supportive of each other. If your husband or wife or boyfriend or girlfriend is smoking and they want to go with vaping, support them. Even if you do neither, support them in their decision to... Uh, to vape, I just think that's I just think that's super cool. I do have one one last shout out to do. James writes to me and says, "Hey Nick, I love your work on YouTube. I'm new to the world of vaping thanks to a coworker and a great friend, Anthony, aka AB3143. I was not a smoker when I started vaping, however." What? I dipped two cans of Skull a day, and I tried to quit, but I just couldn't kick it. Two cans of Skull a day. I can't do I can't do chewing tobacco. I don't like the way it tastes. I don't like the way it smells. When I was very very young, I had a friend named Bill, and Bill was probably 8, 9, 10 years older than me. But he was very very cool, you know. Bill was awesome. Uh Bill took care of me, you know, took care of me and my brother like we were family. And he was always very, very cool. He rode BMX bikes, you know. And uh, he listened to loud metal music. And he dipped like crazy. And one day, he was had this big wad, and he's spitting. And I'm like, that is so cool. I just thought he was the coolest thing ever. I was like, that is so cool. And so flash forward a number of years till I'm in high school and I tried chewing tobacco for the first time because I want to be like my hero Bill because it's so cool. I literally threw up in my mouth like I couldn't handle it. And then about a year and a half later, uh, I got a can of chew spit spilled all over me, which traumatized me to the point of... I don't, when I see a can of tobacco, I, it just makes me crazy. I can't, I can't even handle it. Anyway, Anthony, AKA AB3143, went to a local B&M and bought me an iStick 50 watt, a Kanger sub tank mini, and a whole slew of juices. I was hooked instantly. Now I can enjoy building and learning all that I can about the vaping community. I'm thankful for his generosity and it has been a great change. He will not let me repay him for his generosity, but if you could give him a shout out at some point, that would be awesome. Thanks for all you do. Thanks for all your hard work. Uh, yeah, gargoyle hoof, oh boy OC, absolutely. Um, 
Yeah, absolutely. Anthony, uh, you are shouted out via your friend James. Thank you for getting him on the right track away from tobacco products and into the world of vaping. I think that's a fantastic thing. And, you know, just the other day I was down getting my hair cut, which is why I look so freaking good right now. I was down getting my hair cut and I was talking to my barber and, you know, we were just talking about whatever, just the most random shit uh, of all time. And I was telling him about uh, vaping and ECC and there's a vape event coming up and and he's like, yeah, you know, I, I really, I just got to try that. And so I'm like, dude, <laughs> you are cutting the hair of the correct person. In the next, on my next appointment, I will bring you juice. I will bring you gear. I have extra stuff that's going to get given away. And I, I will get you hooked up. And you, yes, you do need to stop smoking cigarettes. And, you know, I... I think it's cool when people go out of their way to to get other people vaping gear. I just think that's such a nice thing to do. And you know, I'm not I'm not telling you the story to like brag. I'm just saying that every day you come into contact with people who may need your help with getting a kit or getting juice or even just advice and stuff like that. And I and I it makes me happy in my heart. It makes me happy in my man boobs when people are kind and giving like that. So we already did beer. We already did shout outs. We already did a bunch of announcements and advocacy at the top of the program. What I would like to do next are some first impressions, please. So I don't have a whole lot of first impressions to do this week, but I do have a couple cool things as well as something else that I still have not decided whether or not I'm going to talk about. And you'll understand why I say that when we get there. Cult mods. So this is their new, this is the new cult mods. Let me get to their, uh, let me get to their website real fast. I have about a thousand tabs open right now. So cult mods released their first cult mod and it was a Hammond box. It was a project box. There's plenty of videos out there for it. I googled cult mods, you'll see a whole bunch of videos. Gorgor Brittany has one, a lot of people have one. This is their newest version of that. It's not a project box anymore, it's a custom CNC machined aluminum mod called the Soul Reaper. Oh, that's just so cool. Cult Mods has always appealed to me on many levels because I'm a metal guy and because I do the Grim Cult line and metal and vaping and this, that, and the other. And so the Cult Mods just appealed to me. And I had talked to Cult Mods a long time ago about possibly getting one of their project boxes, one of their Hammond boxes, just because I like their logo and I wanted it on a device. I wasn't like, you know, eagerly anticipating another project box, but I liked their logo and I was interested to see what they did with it. That kind of just never happened. Fast forward about six months and then one day the Soul Reaper shows up in the mail and it's just so badass. Let me try to uh, let me try to zoom in and get you some some Soul Reaper porn on here. Yeah, it's cool. That's number three. You can see it's got this like matte finish and when I first got it, it felt a little bit chalkboardy, but now it's all nice and soft to the touch. Here's the button here. It's not super clicky. It's a little bit uh, it's a little bit squishy. It does have a spring-loaded 510 connection on top. Spring-loaded, you know, 510 connection on top. Bottom of it is perfectly flat and then there's a little notch right here where you can open it. See all the fanciness on the inside. See the MOSFET over here. Battery sled, that's where the button is, 510. It all looks really nice on the inside. Thank you for texting me. All looks really cool on the inside and really cool on the outside, honestly. But yeah, when I first got this, I, I've actually got used to it a little bit. And here's the thing, I'm not being easy on cult mods just because I like their style and I like their graphics. All the edges on this are sharp as fuck. This, this edge is a harsh, sharp edge. This point right here, you, you, could, you could take this to somebody's temple and kill them. And I don't know why I jumped to that. I don't know why I jumped to that analogy. What is wrong with me? But all of these corners are sharp. The edges are sharp. All the corners are sharp and pointy. But I get it. It's a metal themed company cult mods they use pentagrams they use evil imagery i get it the mod is pointy it's not just a box 
It's a pointy, the mod itself almost looks like a metal logo. It's swooped down, it's swooped down, it's flat on the bottom, and it comes to these points, and it comes to a point over here, and then this part's cut off. This is what I would expect cult mods to make. Now, it's not super comfortable to hold. I've got used to it, but it's not super comfortable to hold because these points here, they'll just dig into your palm like that. But this is how I end up holding it 100% of the time. I put my pinky on the bottom, I put three fingers here, and I hold it like that. Dual 18650, unregulated, MOSFET on the switch, very sort of par for the course for an unregulated box mod, but stylistically, I think it looks very, very cool. I just think it looks cool. I like that it's pointy. I like that it's sharp. I like that it looks menacing like a freaking metal logo. I just think it looks cool. You can hold it like this too. That's actually really comfortable. Hit the switch with your finger. It's nice. It's great. Um, I would have loved to have seen them use a nice MyTech switch on this. I think that would have really made this great. As it stands, this switch is actually, it's it's pretty nice. And it looks pretty nice too. And it works nice. But a nice MyTech switch on there. Oh, I'd be using this so much more. I think I'm going to take this with me. To ECC just because just because because it's one of those mods that I like and I like showing it off and I think it looks cool and metal and it'll look good in table checks like when we're out to dinner I just like it I just like using it now granted I've had it for about a week and a half now so I haven't really got to put it through its paces I haven't really dropped it haven't got to see how this finish holds up this finish is weird it's matte and it's very, like I said, when I first got it, it felt very slightly chalkboardy, but it's a lot better now. But it seems to scuff. That's the problem. Are you a scuff? I can't tell if that's a scuff or not. Additionally, I was using it with the Kennedy, and the juice gets on top, and it's you have to take like water and and wipe it off with like a wet rag. Like your t-shirt won't do it. Your t-shirt will just smear the juice on this finish. It's just weird. Like I said, as I as always with all of my first impressions, I do need to spend way more time with it uh, before I feel comfortable talking about it. I want to see how it performs in the day to day world. That's one of the reasons I'm taking it to ECC is so I can get more uh, I can get more time with my little cult mods. All right. So next up, what I want to talk about is this new atomizer that I got from Emperor Vapiest. Now they do the Castigador box mod, and they do the pink one, and I, I don't remember what it's called, but they do the Castigador, they did the EVE atomizer, now they do this little atomizer. Look at this little thing. Look how tiny this little atomizer is. Can you believe that that's like an atomizer atomizer? Emperor Vipiest? Oh, they did put Grim Green on there, which is always nice, but doesn't mean it's a good atomizer. Airflow comes in from the top. It's a lot like that little Itty Rawa that I reviewed recently. Very, very, look how tiny, this is tiny. Wait till you see the deck. Look at that, look at this little tiny deck. I mean, that is a tiny, tiny little deck. Uh, three post squared off design. I managed to get a six wrap 24 gauge anarchist build in there around a two and a half millimeter screwdriver, but that's about the limit of what, of honestly, of what you, what you can fit on this tiny little deck. Tiny, tiny little deck, but it works, it fires. I mean, it it puts off the vapor pretty freaking well. Now, the airflow on this thing isn't amazing. It's not fantastic. In fact, it's actually pretty stiff. So yeah, I've been rocking this little atomizer on the Rig V2 because look at that. That is so fucking cool, that just looks cool. Look at the Rig V2 with just this dinky little atomizer sticking out on top. So like I said, the airflow is stiff. You can almost mouth to lung it. You can almost mouth to lung it. In fact, you could close off this little airflow adjustment a little bit and you could easily mouth to lung this. It's almost a mouth to lung atomizer. But if you carb it a little bit, you can do some good lung hits as well. With these little atomizers, you kind of have to change the way that you vape, which is weird I, to say, I know, but you get into a routine with atomizers. 
Like when I'm using, majority of the time what I'm using is a Tugboat V2 with some sort of different cap on it. Anarchist cap, whatever. I've been actually using it with the traditional Tugboat cap on there. But you vape, 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 you drip, you vape, 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 you drip. So you know how much to drip and you know how much to vape. And you kind of get into this little bit of a routine that kind of hopefully doesn't look like this. But with this little tiny, tiny atomizer, I drip, I, I take the cap off. That was my first thing. And I put like two drops on this coil, two drops on that coil, put the cap back on, and then I'm good. I found that if I do any more or if I drip even like four drops through the through the drip tip, I'll get juice in my mouth. And that's just the way it is. You can't over drip. The deck is so tiny and the tolerances are so tight that you just moisten this one, moisten that one, put your cap back on, and you'll get eh, maybe five or six toots before you have to actually re reapply juice. But it works. The flavor is off the charts. I mean, the flavor is stellar. It has such a small chamber and it has such very little room to travel. The vapor just goes like right, explodes into your mouth hole. The flavor is is stellar. And plus, fuck man, that looks so cool. I think that just looks so cool. The Rig V2 with this little atomizer. What's it called? What's this atomizer called? It's called, it's called the Lepton, the Lepton, the Lepton. It's only eight millimeters tall. I shared a picture of it on my Instagram page. I can never find anything for Emperor Vape East other than their Facebook. So that's what I'm gonna link to in the description is their Facebook. I don't know. I can't seem to find a website for them. I can't seem to find anything for them other than their other than their Facebook. So that's that's what you get linked to is their Facebook in the description. But yeah, I'm kind of excited about this little atomizer. I don't think I'm going to take it with me to ECC. Just because you kind of have to baby it. You kind of have to pay attention to how much you're dripping and it's just it's a little bit of a process and at vape meets I end up just over dripping anyway. In fact, Pretty sure my vape meat setup for ECC is going to be the 44 with a Tugboat V2 green anarchist cap. This is going to be it because I'll have a fucking mountain of battery life, I'll have plenty of power, and I'll be able to just carelessly talk to people and be like, yeah, absolutely, that does look cool, while dripping and then... Just clouds, bro, clouds everywhere at ECC. So... Yeah, I'm going to spend more time with this. I'm going to put some other builds on there. I didn't exactly center this build on there. And I think that's that it's designed for a center post build. And that's not what I put on here. So I'll be interested to see if it's any different with a center post build. Haven't had any leaking issues with it or anything. The O-rings on the bottom seem nice and strong. And uh, like I said, the flavor is stellar it's just a little bit uh, fiddly to use additionally I don't know how much this thing is gonna cost and I know I know that there's people who are not into the tiny little air atomizers and I'm not really into the tiny little atomizers I don't find them appealing I don't I'm not like oh yeah that's I want the tiniest atomizer on earth that's not I'm not looking for that that doesn't appeal to me but I'm excited to actually try it out and see from a non small atomizer kind of person how it works for uh, how it works for me so the last thing I want to talk about now I wasn't sure if I was gonna do this but I'm gonna do this it has to be done I don't talk about juice I don't talk about juice I just don't talk about it I occasionally will mention different brands that are vaping. I have friends that run different vape companies. I talk about Lane Cove from time to time, Ruby Roos Juice, quite good. Talk about this, that, and the other. I like Bonsai Vapors, the Milk Plus. I like something. I, why can't I think of any other juice lines that I like? But there's, I like some Lab Rat stuff. I have friends who run juice lines and I like their juices. I love the Vigilante stuff as well, most of the Vigilante stuff. And so, I run my own liquid company, so I don't like to talk about other liquid companies, either good or bad. It's just a road that I don't want to go down. I can't, as a liquid company owner, go on YouTube and be like, this, this juice sucks. I just don't want to do it. It's something I don't want to do, and it's, not, it's a road I'm not going to go down. But I am making an exception right now. And I want to preface this by saying I love Brewwell. 
I love the juices that they do. They have a banana cereal juice. Ugh, it's like banana cornflakes. Fucking delicious. Their Brew 88, which I will be vaping ad nauseum at ECC. It's like a lavender or a jasmine milk tea flavor. It's stellar. It's unbelievable. It's fantastic. It is crazy. Now, they released a new juice line recently, crafted by the Brewwell Vapory, called Milk. Milk. Called Milk. And the packaging is awesome. I get sucked in by good packaging, by good marketing. I, I hook, line, and sinker, this juice drew me in. Now, they have a strawberry version of this as well, which I have not tried yet. And I'm just going to go grab it right now, actually. So this is the strawberry version of it, <laughs> which could be good, which could be good, which could be good. And I think, you th I, think, I think everybody knows where I'm going with this. I was really interested to try this, and Brewwell hooked it up. They sent me a package of some of my favorites of their flavors. The Brew 88, I can't recommend it enough. I think it's stellar. I think it's spectacular. And included was these two little milk samples. And I'm like, oh, that's so fucking nice of them. I wanted to try this juice, and now here it is, and I'm going to try it. So I popped it open, and I smelled it. And I kind of went, what? What? So I went online, and I looked. And it's supposed to be a sweetened condensed milk flavor. Not to be confused with Milk Plus, which is mostly like a vanilla caramel flavor. Milk, M-Y-L-K, Milk, is supposed to be a sweetened condensed milk vape. So why, why when I smell it, does it smell like a cheese packet from macaroni and cheese? Why does it smell like that? That's exactly what it smells like, and I can't get that out of my head. It smells like cheese. <laughs> It smells like fucking macaroni and cheese. So I thought to myself, there's a lot of juices I like where the juice necessarily doesn't smell good, but it vapes amazingly. So I gave it a little bit of a lick test. Put some on my finger like this, rub your fingers together, get those aromatics going. Ah, oh, I tasted it. Yeah, I could see that being creamy. There's a little bit of sweetness as well in there. So let's try it. I re-wicked my copper, copper, brass Kennedy 24 millimeter atomizer. And I just juiced up the coils and wicks like crazy with this milk. And I'm smelling it and I'm going, still smells like cheese. Still smells like cheese. Still smells like cheese. I can't get over that it smells like cheese. So I took my first toot. It tastes like I'm vaping cheese. It tastes like I'm vaping macaroni and cheese packets. Like I take the powdered cheese packet, I mixed it in water, and I drank it. I can't get over this. It's salty. It tastes salty in my mouth. And I'm on I only kept this around. It's been two days now that I've had this milk in this atomizer because I've been letting people try it. In fact, my, my friend Casey, I was hanging out with her and she, I said, you have to try this juice. So she smelled it and she says, why does it smell like cheese? And I said, yeah, it smells like cheese. It smells like macaroni and cheese. And so I let her vape it. She gagged in her mouth she handed my mod back to me, and she looked me dead in the eyes and said, why would you do that to somebody you love? I can't get over the fact that this tastes like cheese. And I'm sorry, Brew Well. I'm sorry. I love Brew 88. I love all your other flavors. And I'm going to try the strawberry version of it right now. I'm going to get this... I'm going to get this off my coils. The vapor actually smells kind of nice and sweet. And I'm going to give the strawberry version a try right now. It smells like strawberry milk. This one actually smells good. It smells like strawberry milk. Let's see how it goes. Let's see. Let's see the flavor. 
No cheese. Little bit of cheese. That might be because I still have the milk in there. The original milk. So much better. God, so much better. Strawberry milk is delicious. Original milk tastes like cheese. My apologies. It just tastes like cheese. And I don't have... The only reason I'm comfortable talking about this is because I don't personally sell a competing product. I don't have a condensed milk vape. I don't even have a strawberry milk vape in any of the juices that I sell. So I can't say, this milk sucks, but go buy my milk. Or this strawberry milk sucks, so go buy my strawberry milk. That's not what I'm trying to accomplish here. I'm just so fascinated that this made it through production, through testing, tasting and smelling the way that it does. And I could be way wrong. I could, there could be a whole mass group of people that love this juice. To me, it tastes like freaking macaroni and cheese. The strawberry is actually kind of delightful though. So there you go. There you go, that's what we talked about. Now, this vlog is already way too long. I don't have any retro vaping prepared for this week. Uh, I, I do have some silica. We're gonna do some silica building next week, but what I wanna do now, instead of viewer mails and instead of a retro vaping, and I don't even have a fancy intro for it, I want to shoehorn in this next segment. So this new segment is going to be called Reviews for Things That Never Got Reviews. Sometimes in the vape world, certain things will happen. For example, a modder or a Chinese company will release a mod. And let's just say it's this, right? I haven't done a review for this yet, and I'll tell you why. This came from VHO, and this was a quad, and this is not exactly what I'm going to talk about, but it's what I'm going to talk about right now to give you an example of what I'm about to talk about. Sometimes things happen in the vape world where a modder or a Chinese company will send out a mod and say, Hi, good sir, purchasing manager, would you like to review this mod? And then you say, oh, okay, yeah, that sounds really cool, and you put it on your list, and then when it's getting closer to that time, that mod is going to have a review, they've either discontinued it, or revised it or done something to make the unit that you have completely worthless. No one will care about an outdated, discontinued, or already revised device. And so other things also happen like this quad. Now this quad was supposed to get a review a while ago, but my button was getting really finicky and, and stopped working. And right as I'm noticing that my button is getting finicky and not working, VHO reaches out to me and said, hey, we're having an issue with our top caps. We're going to have to send you a new one. So I said, okay. So add about another two weeks onto the review time for that issue. Then I get the new top cap and it doesn't work. It doesn't slide on correctly. I can get it about halfway before it gets completely stuck. And I try uh, cranking it on there and it just got completely stuck. So I called VHO and I said, I'm gonna have to send this back to you right now. My top cap is stuck, it won't slide on. He said, yeah, there were some machining issues. We're gonna send the mod back, we're gonna send you a completely new one. So all of that pushed this review out about a month just because it was getting close and I was gonna do a video for it and my button started getting wonky and they said, hey, we're gonna send you a new top cap. Then this, 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 this and happened and so now a month later when I should have done the video a long time ago, now I'm finally gonna be able to get around to reviewing this quad, which is actually really, really cool. And that's not what I'm gonna be talking about today. What I'm gonna be talking about today is this. Now, they don't have a website or a Facebook or anything. They handed this mod off to me at Vape, uh, Vapor Slam, sorry, Vapor Slam. And I posted a few pictures of it on my social media. It's a 3D printed triple 18650 box mod. And they've got the pluses and minuses clearly marked on there. And I have actually a triple married pair of LGHE batteries. So I'm gonna put these in here. I love the way he did these batteries. So the tongs on top are reversed. So there's no way, and they're curled up like a little sled at the end. So there's no way they can grab your battery wrappings, which makes me, oh, just a happy, happy camper. So it's a triple 18650 box. It's got a big old switch on it. 
and there's no MOSFET or anything on the inside, but it is wired very well. But there's no MOSFET to protect the switch. And he was telling me that him and his professor did a bunch of tests on this device, and oh yeah, this switch is totally rated up to 50 amps or something like that. So I said, cool. And then I got it, and the 510 spins. And it will still fire, but the 510 spins. And I'm going to try to show you this up close. The 510 spins. So that's the 510 connection. As you can see, the internals fairly clean, but there is no MOSFET. Now, when I screw this atomizer on here, I want you to watch what happens. Ready? It's secure down. The whole thing is spinning on the inside spins and I can't I don't have a tool to get in there to tighten this down but it spins it just spins and it spins when I'm taking it off and it spins when I'm putting it back on it still works it still functions but it spins and so I was kind of like ah okay that's a thing it's 3d printed and it spins and I'm still going to do a review of it and then as I was coming close to getting the review for this it was coming up in line and I'm like okay this is going to be next week the dude messages me on Facebook and he says, we're not doing the 3D printed mods anymore. We're moving to ceramic. We're going to have a solid ceramic mod. They don't have a website, they don't have a Facebook, and they're not even making this mod anymore. Why am I going to review this? So this, this falls into the category of reviews for things that never got reviewed. What this category is going to be is stuff that's old, outdated, uh, discontinued, something like that. This was really cool. I used it while I was at Vape Mania or Vapor Slam, and I liked it. I liked using it. It's not comfortable at all to hold because the size is big and these edges are pointy. These edges are sharp and the corners aren't pointy. It's just the edges are pointy and you have no other option. I end up holding it a lot like this just so I don't have to have these kind of hitting the webbing of my, of my fingers threw a Plumes of Hazard sticker on there for some reason, but it's a triple 18650 unregulated box. It works, it works great. It's rocking awesome with this Tugboat V2 on here, and it's nice. I didn't know how much these were ever gonna cost. In fact, I never ever got a price on these. Now they're 3D printed, and this is a big thing to 3D print. It's got, I mean, you can look down the side of it, which they didn't sand off and there's like some imperfections in it like there's these little like flash flashing I don't know you can hear it it's like little it looks like little blemishes on it additionally when you look at it the top slopes the back of the mod slopes in like it's do you see this bend in the top you can see how the top goes bleh, bleh. That's from the 3D printing process. Evidently, this is sitting on a surface that is warm. And as it's 3D printing, the, it heats up more and more and more, and it gets these little bends and imperfections in it. You can see, you can see it really well right there. It like swoops up. It just swoops up like that. So for all of these reasons and more, this just never got a video, and I finally was like, this is never going to get reviewed. It just took up my time. I used it. It's just taking up space. It's never going to be on YouTube. It needs to at least be on YouTube. So here it is in my new segment. I got number 42 as I try to do pretty frequently. And the one thing that's great about this is the magnets. So it's held on by magnets. And he was explaining to me how they do it as the magnets are embedded in the 3D printing process so they'll be 3d printing it and of course it goes like from the bottom up and these little bit of layers and when they get to a certain layer they pause they put the magnets in and then they keep 3d printing over it so you don't see any magnets in the door and you don't see any magnets in the body but when you slide this up you can feel them grab and that's it I mean the finish overall is pretty nice on it the fit and finish on it is okay I don't care for this 3d printed Texture. I, I don't know. I don't care for it. The door, uh, you could just easily, it just kind of comes off. The magnets hold it in, but if you were to go, bleh, it'll just fall out. 
triple 18650 and I have another triple 18650 my box mod that is much much nicer much better fit and finish much better overall box in my opinion plus they don't even make these anymore they don't sell them there's no MOSFET on the switch this is a honkin switch that is a big switch that you have to press into the body of the device I don't know how long that switch is gonna last it's lasted me since vapor slam so what's that that was like four months ago three months ago four months ago was it really that long ago no matter anyway I just wanted to throw this on YouTube I don't think it's amazing but it's a thing that I used for a while it's got a weird switch it's got magnets in it and they don't even make it anymore they just don't so yeah that's what I hope to do with this new segment is show you and talk about some products that were either uh, obsolete before they got to YouTube uh, discontinued upgraded stuff like that and I actually have a bunch of stuff that falls into that category where I was either asked by the vendor don't do a review of that because we've updated it I was asked by the vendor don't do a review of that because we discontinued it or it's one of those things where it's a DIY ish mod by some guy and I have it to review but he doesn't reply to emails or have a website or have anything you know doesn't have a business going there's things like that there's a lot that falls into these categories and that's what I hope to feature in this segment on the vlog so I'm gonna wrap this up that's what I got for today thank you so much everybody remember that as you're watching this video I'm gone at ECC so things like emails Facebook PMs uh, comments will not be getting replied to for a very long time I'm gonna do my best sometime next week to take at least one day to do some correspondence but then I'm gone again when I come back I'm gonna try to have a couple days of correspondence but then I'm gone again I'm gonna be very hit and miss all over the place I hope to run into you either at ECC or at uh, vape mania or up in uh, in you know where are we going where are we going ruby roo where are we going connecticut we're going to connecticut for the fundraiser up there so yeah that's what i got there's just a lot of stuff uh, i'm assuming i'll have a whole mess of first impressions post ecc but yeah i hope to see you there thank you so much everybody for watching for joining me again in the vlog and as always screw it i'm gonna grab this let's keep on vaping Uh, I finally got good at tornadoes, but I can't do... Yeah, a tornado going across the desk. That's cool. That's about the extent of what I can do as a tornado. There were a few. There were a few in there. There were a few. I'm not getting any better.